Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and we all know what Thursday is. It's an update for Space Engineers, and you're probably wondering what you're going to be getting your hands on this week. Well, let me tell you, they do not disappoint with their updates. Every week, there is something exciting, and in this week, we have a number of new features. Now, previously, it was just rumoured that these would be controllable. But today, we have access and we can actually control these turrets manually. So you can target individual engine bays, take out key components of a ship. Absolutely amazing. So let's hop into this chair and give them a whirl. So we're going to hit K. We're going to find our Gatlin Cut turret with a Gat. There we go. We're going to hit Control. And as you can see, we've got this really nice sort of aiming reticle. Pretty simple, but it's pretty damn effective. You've got the green laser there at the bottom. And just listen to the sound of this. I mean, it sounded like that before, but it does, it sounds damn good. Anyway, let's have a go at one of these targets. So as you can see, it's just cutting through the metal, just absolutely destroying the st static armor. And there we go. Now let's move on to the interior turret and have a look at that. Now we've all seen these fire actually before, but it's nice to actually have a go. So let's have a look at the interior turret. So I do believe it's just there. Hit control. And we've got that much smaller caliber sound. We've heard that before, and we've got the same sort of aiming reticle. And from what I can tell, we do a little bit more, well, a little bit less damage than the big Gatling turret, but that is pretty much expected, as this is more of an anti-personnel turret or weapon itself. Anyway, let's hop off that and go to the most devastating of all three, the missile turret. So let's search missile, and we hit control. And as you can see, we've got this missile turret now. You see how just how fast these missiles actually fly off. Now, precise, there's a little bit of a reload time between them. There's not too much sound on them, but just look at the devastation if they hit a ship. Literally, all the components are pretty much gone from the ship. We'll hit that next one up as well. And the devastation of them, if you get an accurate shot on a moving target, that may be a little bit hard. But using this sort of control like this, moving the mouse around to actually control it is so much easier than the more complicated turrets that we had to build in the past. Now, there is a number of other facts that you may want to know about these turrets. First of all, you can control them through an antenna that I'll show you shortly. And secondly, you can have multiple people in different turrets at once. So you could have a turret or a ship with six or seven turrets on just like this, and you could have a person in each of them. So it's very interesting. Anyway, let's connect up through an antenna. So the rules apply for any sort of connection. We've got an antenna on our station and we've got an antenna on that ship over there. And we're going to find the ship. So we're TAU, that is our ship that we're looking for. And then as we're going to do that, we're going to look for the missile launcher. And we're going to control the missile launcher. Now we're controlling this missile launcher. We're going to send some targets at us. So we're going to hit the target menu and we're just going to set one on go. So toggle block on. Disable that menu, and as you can see, we've got a ship flying at us. So we're going to have to try and fire at them, disable them out before they hit us. We managed to get that one. We'll have to send a second one at us in a minute. So let's send a second one in our direction. Hit go on that. Toggle block on. And let's just see what happens here. I think that one might actually even collide with the other ship. And it has. Anyway, as you can see, they're going past here. We can actually fire our missiles up at them. And using this system just makes you so much more deadly with the missile launchers. Like, fighters will not stand a chance if you have a good gunner on one of these turrets. You can just simply snipe people with them. And they're pretty fast on the old reload speed. So they're just a really nice all-round and really deadly weapon to actually have and man, making it more deadly. Anyway, let's move on. So if we continue on inside, I'm going to show you the next feature. Now, a question that was asked by many is when they were shooting at our armor blocks. Let's just quickly add some ammunition into here and we'll turn the thing on and hit that as on. When they were shooting at armor blocks, they were trying to work out where the actual item would go. Where's the scrap metal? Should there be scrap metal falling for a bit? And that's what they've actually added in. They've added a new resource called scrap metal and it basically comes off ship armor or small ship blocks and large ship blocks that have been shot at and destroyed and basically it drops down to the ground you can see some's falling off there and the weight of it's calling the, it's the actual ship to tilt we've got gyroscopes also popping out and when these items get destroyed they drop the scrap metal like that so let's grab some of that scrap metal 
The scrap metal is very useful because we can also use it to refine. You can see it's shooting up at the crate. As it shoots up at the different armor pieces, scrap metal is going to pop off and we can actually use that and scavenge that rather than wasting a lot of armor when it becomes damaged or becomes shot at. So as you can see, we're going to probably drop off a little bit more as it rotates. The turrets do target items first, so things like thrusters, cockpits, and the actual containers themselves before they target the individual armor. So it's most likely that you're going to take a ship out pretty easy without actually destroying all its armor unless the cockpit is covered with a load of armor itself. So let's go and grab that last little bit of scrap metal, and we'll head over to the refinery. So as we go into here, we're going to enter the refinery bay. It should be on the right. And we'll enter through here, lights come on, and doors open. And if we press K, we'll see that we've got 217 scrap metal. So we can put that into our refinery. Place that in there, and you can see how it's being processed back into iron ingots. That then we can take over to the assembler, and we can start building ourselves iron plates once again. So it's just a really nice feature, and it means you can scrap ships that have been battle damaged, and you can even collect up and scavenge wrecked sort of ships that are floating in sort of a debris field. Just a really nice little feature to add. Now, the final thing I would like to show you is the ability to actually customly place and move around and spawn asteroids within your world. Now, there's some asteroids down there that were generated with the world, but I just didn't like the placement of them. I wanted to build something that fitted towards my sort of base. So in creative mode and creative mode only, you can actually place these. You might remember the Shift F10 menu. So I've hit Shift F10 and we've got a whole selection of different sorts of asteroids in a whole variety of different forms. So let's have a look at something that is quite big. So we can see this is quite a big one. And the bigger they are, the longer they're going to take to spawn. And there's just a whole variety of features you can actually do with these. You can stack them, merge them into each other, and just create some really interesting asteroid shapes. So as you can see, I'm creating some sort of cavern for my actual base itself. And if you get quite creative with this, you can build your base into these, integrate them together, and make some sort of ultimate sort of shelter. So you can just see what we've done there. And if we go Shift F10 once again, and we place another size one. So let's place like a small asteroid field. So we'll have a look for that. So many small asteroids. So let's spawn that in. So this is like a little cluster. And you could even build yourself like a little field of debris and all sorts of items here. So let's place that there, for instance. Now, say we placed one too many. We placed something that we don't want to place. We want to remove it. We can simply hit left control and hit X at the same time. And it will ask us, would you like to delete this asteroid? And it cannot be undone. And there we go. We've deleted our big asteroid. What is also rather exciting is that if we access our Shift F10 once again, and we pick a smaller looking asteroid. So, for instance, let's go with that big. They're really big. That one's quite small. And we'll spawn that one in. And we place this within our building. We're going to get a really interesting result. So we'll place that about there. Now, I do warn you, if you're going to place these within a structure, don't place them in an area that has moving parts because it'll work absolutely horribly. And it looks like this is the end of this sort of base area. And we could even mine this out and do like an inner asteroid sort of tunnel. And we can work our way into it like that. And just build something that looks really creative, really nice with this new feature. I would like to thank you guys for watching. And my question towards you guys is, what will you be making with this patch? Are you going to make a massive asteroid base? Or are you going to be planning on doing something with them turrets? Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.